Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Minecraft, where today we are as ever playing the Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack, which is enormous and we're probably never going to never gonna be able to finish it, but we've decided that a good sort of finishing point would be to launch a rocket. So to that end, Pete, I believe, yes, Pete has built a rocket silo here. Let's go down and have a look at that. So we've got we've got these um, Duke Nukem doors that look Duke Nukem here and make, that, make the appropriate sounds. I don't know if we can nip down here. There's there's a pumpkin lighting the way up for some reason. But anyway, we can go down this endless um, st staircase down here. And we find this, so we've got this sort of launch place and apparently people have been messing around with putting in some pretty pictures and screens that, I think these are just, yeah, these are just pictures. These are just for decorative reasons. And we can step through here and here. It's all been very made very sort of nicely and sort of stylishly and stuff. And we've got here, we've got a, an actual rocket launch pad. So presume, and in the middle, I don't know. What, I don't know why these are different, but they do appear to be. Um, the one in the middle requires a pickaxe to lift it up. The one around, the ones around, and it's slightly taller. The ones around the outside don't require any tool to pick them up. I don't know why there's a difference, but there is a difference. So, yes, this is this is where we're going to put the actual rocket itself, and it's going to go and disappear off that way. Oh, the shooting star, how how, how pretty. Um, so yeah, but so th this is going to be the sort of the the bit we need to. To sort of finish off and complete the uh, complete what we're what we're planning to do with this mod pack, and actually it's possible that some of the guys might carry on a bit longer afterwards and and, uh, and go a bit further, but we'll we'll see. That's where we're probably going to mostly stop. I did also notice that someone's gone in and put in some giant um, banners up over here with uh, mine and Al's uh, channel logos on them, so that's very nice of them. Um, they're a little bit ridiculous. No, they're not a little bit ridiculous. They're a lot ridiculous, but well, that's that's uh, that's what those are. <laughs> So we've start, We've been we're essentially working on trying to get, as I say, to get to the, to the point where we're ready to launch a rocket, go up into space, and go. Oh look, we're in space. So to that end, um, I've been working on making. Some, we've been working through the quest lines basically. So if we look in here in the uh, tier four main quest line, we've got a lot of stuff here done, and it's all sort of space related stuff. But I personally have been working along here with the oxygen gear, the oxygen masks, and the un, unprepared space suit. That's a terrible spelling. Prepared, prepared space suite. Um, yes, good. So I managed to do this, but this required in absolutely enormous quantities of aluminium. All of these take large, huge numbers of aluminium plates to make, and you do it in the blacksmith's workshop as well, which means you also need um, methane gas. So this, I spent quite a long time waiting, waiting for aluminium to be squashed. As you can see, this takes one, two, three, four, about 18 pieces of iron for this one, and and we needed five of each of this, each of the suit types as well. And then each one of these again takes another uh, 12 in the case of this one, and then only a, a mere 10 in the case of the boots. But basically, it's an enormous quantity of aluminium going into all of this, and it just took, it took forever to get the, to get all of that squashed because essentially I had to claim large, massive quantities of aluminium ingots from the system, from the computer system, which um, was being produced at quite a rate. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what system was producing that, but it was being it was being created, and then I had to put it into is this it? The compactor over here. So I shoved it all in here. It gets compacted into here. I then take it out. I can put it into the blacksmith's workshop. The problem with that, though, was the blacksmith. In order to make this particular recipe, you need massive quantities of methane gas, and I kept running out of that. So we've got this system here where you can put in um, hummus onto the um, humus even onto the uh, onto the front of these these uh, fluid extractors, and they will turn that into methane gas. So I can. And we've got that now. I think we did get that automated. Some, somebody automated. I think it was Al who automated it during the stream. So yeah, we can now craft that. So I can make. I can say I want ten of those, and it'll go off and say, well, that that takes um, uh, dirt and wheat uh, to make compost and uh, to, to then make the hummer. So you then go start. That runs through that. The computer system. This is what the computer system is really good for. It just builds all this stuff up really quickly, which is very very nice. And then you then come over here. You put put it into this into this placer like that. And that will automatically dump them in there, and these machine, these fluid extractors will then start pulling the uh, the methane out out of it and putting it into the tank up here, which you can then grab and dump into the into the blacksmith workshop. This is incredibly slow, though. Even if you shove one on the front of each of these blocks, it's still incredibly slow. So what you can also do is get some empty cells out of the system as well. Let's just get a massive number of them because it makes it easier. And then come over to there's a machine over here. So is this one the chemical reactor possibly? Let's find out. If you put so you put that on one side, those in the other side, and yes, there we go. It now pulls the methane out and puts it into a cell instead. And as you can see, this is much much quicker, um, but it requires the extra step of doing the cells. And you then have to carry the cells across and, and, and empty them into the machine. So, but this is this is just asking for extra automation. It would be relatively, it'd be very straightforward to rig one of these up to a um, 
to one of the uh, the, uh, in, in, the the interface systems, and then have that pump the uh, the stuff in, and then have a fluid interface on it to pull the to pull the methane back out again. But we didn't. We reckon that we probably didn't need enough for that to be worthwhile. And we're getting to the sort of point where we don't want to go in and start doing enormous amounts of um, of automation because we're not going to be carrying on that much further with the game once we've got once we've got the rocket launched. Or at least I'm I'm not. I'm not sure about the other guys. You may still be able to watch continued uh, further further adventures on Al's channel, but we shall we shall we shall see what they what they fancy. Eventually, it's all been put into the cells, so we can take that back out again. We can come around here, and then the way I the way I did it, which admittedly is possibly not the best way, but it, it was it was quick and easy at the time, was just dump all of the cells straight into this tank, like this. It's a lovely splooshing noise, and then they all go into there, and you can then again, once again, take the tank and empty it in one go into into the into the blacksmith workshop. And the reason I did that was because this only holds 16 buckets worth or 16 cells worth, whereas this tank will hold 256. So rather than faffing around with dumping half a dozen cells into here and then doing the thing and then another half a dozen and so on, it's a lot easier just to have the tank where you can go bloop and do it all in one go. So that's much much easier. Let's put these cells back into the uh, into the system because I don't actually want them. So yes, that was the uh, that was making the um, the the space suite, and so I so I made that that was and, and the oxygen masks up here, and then Al got Al, Al carried on then with the, he was making the radiation and pressure plates while I was doing that. So I then went off looking for other things to do while he finished that one off, and then went on to make the actual uh, space suites. Yes, space suites. Um, Yes, so that's that's what, what do these require? Oh yes, each each of these things required a large quantity of radiation layers, armor layers, and pressure layers. So I think he was off trying to automate all of this because it was an enormous quantity of each of these that was required. As you can see, it's sort of it's three of each of these plus two of each two of these and three of these. So that's eight things per item, and there's four items, so that's 32, 32 for the whole suit, and then there's five of us, so you're looking at about more than 100, you're looking at 160 of them in total in order to do, do all of that, so yeah, I sincerely hope he was doing the, uh, he was, he, he'd automated that, because that would be ridiculous otherwise. So yes, that meant I was then going. Hmm, what else can I make? So I went down. I went through the, the these ones. These ones down here because they were just bonus ones that nobody had bothered to do because they weren't really required. So I made an evaporator, which was just you know a load of what's this vanadium plates. That was that was that was easy, and uh, and then crushed crush fluorite, which actually was just a case of getting it out of a out of the uh, out of a box because we already had some, but nobody had, nobody had claimed that recipe. Then I was able to make argon. How did I do this one? Um, oh, yeah, it was a centrifugal se centrifugal separator. So I made a load of fluorine, argon, and technetium, which has all gone into the system. There's some there's some dodgy dodgy chemistry going on in here if you look around a bit. Because uh, then I was able to make liquid argon by um, oh yeah, put it, get, by putting yeah, make, you make liquid argon by uh, putting argon and sodium hydroxide into a al alchemical imbuer. So I had to make one of those, which was a small adventure. Um, and then you can t then you can turn that then you can put that into the cells, uh, which is what the the, uh, the quest was all about. And then you're allowed to go on and make dark magic essence, uh, which is um, another one where we can. How, how do we do this? So I think this one I did just take it out of the system because we already had some. And there, look, there it is. Good, thanks. Done now. Um, but with this one, you can. Apparently, there's all kinds of weird stuff in here. Apparently, if you distill liquid argon, you get mercury. So that's um, and dark magic essence, which I'm pretty sure is not how science works. Um, but there's lots of stuff like this where you can. Um, get mercury yeah or if you just if you if you draw if you <laughs> if you put liquid argon in a drying basin which is basically a big bowl and just evaporate it again it, it turns into mercury i mean i don't yeah that's not how science works guys sorry about it. sorry to tell you this but it's, it's just not <clears throat> at that point i got sort of everything started to look a bit difficult like the mob's laughter factory down here it just there was so much advanced stuff goes into these that i decided actually let's Leave Al working on the on the uh, spacesuits up here, and I'll go off and do something a bit different. So I had another look in the quest lines. I went and thought I'd have a look at the black magic. So I've not touched on that for a while, and so I'd have got quite a bit of stuff done around here. Um, Blood infused gemstone and the uh, had already done, I think. But I made this. I made a bound tool, which is basically a um, a novelty, a, a some sort of magical sword that apparently runs faster than a normal normal sword would, but uses up a, a life essence in the in, in 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 order to do so. Which seemed like a nice idea, so I gave it a try. It just turned out it was blooming useless, and the uh, the the sentient sword I'd already had was significantly better. And there are lots of tinker's weapons that are far far better as well. So I um I made that, and then I just chucked it in a box and forgot about it because it was rubbish. This false swipe stick seemed interesting because it suggested that um, bring, it will bring down entities to half a heart. I was hoping that would be in a single blow, so it was a thing that would just, a bit almost like the withering, you just smack somebody with it and boom, all their health would be gone. Um, but after a bit of testing, it, it doesn't. It turns out it just does a small amount of damage, it's just incapable of killing. So, yeah, that's uh, not so great either, so we're not going to use that. 
Um, I made oh I made some basic ritual tools which is you know, go in and make lots and lots of pens. Now, these were mild, mildly interesting. They required putting lots of different things into the blood altar, so I, I was doing that, which was a uh, nice and uh, which sort of followed on from made, made me think that maybe maybe all that stuff I spent I, sp I spent time setting up uh, weeks and months ago would actually be quite useful. So magma cream is apparently slime and blaze powder, and uh, I, I, I noticed really out of mild curiosity that you can also smelt this into a, con a congealed magma cream, and then it becomes food. So that was. A bit of a surprise, <clears throat> but yes, with the blood altar, you can turn a magma cream into a um, into into an orange pen. You can turn lapis block into a blue pen. You can turn a gas tear into a yellow pen, and a block of obsidian into a green pen. And yeah, well, and then you can turn all of those into this ritual diviner. And I haven't actually done anything with that yet because I ran out of time. But that's a thing you can do, and then presumably this will be useful for doing the rituals and getting the blood altar tier four. So that's going to be that's potentially going to be interesting. We'll need to get weak blood shards and, and, and learn about rituals for that. But that's a that's that's a yeah that's a for next time. I also uh, let's press the right buttons. Here we go. I also went along the top here and I made the promise of tenacity two, um, or is it? The th Three, sorry, I made no. I made the bowl of promises, strength two, and the promise of tenacity three, which is a way to upgrade your um, blood your blood infusion machine um, to even higher levels. So I now have, if we look down, actually, let's go downstairs and have a look at it from down here. In my, not that many stairs, clumsy. Try again. In this, the blood infuser, I've now got a promise of tenacity three, which means this is now a mass. There's a massive quantity of space in here. If I should, yes, there we go. It uh, multiplies the tank capacity from eight times the standard one, and it basically it, it raises the level of it, so you can do um, more. You can do more difficult recipes. And I've still got the promise of productivity, which makes the machine a bit more efficient. A promise of speed, or whatever it's going to be called. Let's see. Let's see what promises we can find. So we've got the tenacity one, tenacity two, tenacity three. Velocity, that's presumably speed. Yeah, that speeds it up. So I should probably make one of those. Uh, productivity is the one that makes it more efficient. Fine. And yeah, so I should probably make one of these promises of velocity. But that requires a lot of dark gems, and that's a problem. But anyway, we can put these things into here. And they, make, they basically make the blood infuser better. Uh, allowing you to do bigger and better and scarier things with it. So it now runs a bit faster. The, the, that said, it's still... Despite the despite the it running faster, a lot of the things I try and make from it are still very very slow. Like particularly the block. If I, if I put a block of diamond in to make a diamond promise acceptor, let's make one of those. Bink. There we go. I can now bring that. I should just shove it straight in here because I'm going to want to show you this as well. So if I put this in here and uh, in here, sorry, then it will very it will gradually start to um, to infuse this block of diamond with blood and. As you can probably imagine, just from sort of you know common sense and stuff, if you soak a diamond in blood, it's going it's not going to soak the the blood up very quickly. So you can see there, it's moving incredibly slowly. One thing I have discovered, that I think might see, it feels like a bit of a bug in in the in the game, but if you've got a um, if you put something that's really slow, like the block of diamond in here, and let it fill up to about here, then if you put other things in, it seems that that much progress is available to be used on the other things, so they can run incredibly quickly. So if you if you wait for this to get to, if you have one of these that's got to about about here, as I say, and then you dump in a stack of coal, it'll make the blood wax coal incredibly quickly. Or if you put in iron to make the iron promise acceptors, they will happen much more quickly than normal as well. Because I think it's it's sort of like it's it's made it's made sort of three minutes of progress or whatever it takes to get to about here, and then it can use that on everything else much more quickly. So that's a sort of a nice side effect of the way the thing works what happens if you put two promises of tenacity oh you can't okay so yes that was a that was a thing <clears throat> i also made this gigantic blood chest this is this is obviously as you can see it's obviously a multi-block structure by the side size of it and to make this you need to have you need to make a load of reinforced uh, undead planks which was trivial it was just chucking i think that was just chucking um undead wood into the blood infuser and we had quite a lot of that so that was easy and then you, but you also needed to make um the chest part of it yeah the colossal you need to make a colossal blood chest as a special block that was a bit more difficult we need lots of evil infused plates and platinum plates and silicon and uh carmesine and wood cake lots lots of stuff as you can see but i was able to make that and now we've got this in, instead of the repairing chest that used to be over here that i've removed if I now open this up, you can see it's, it's a massive chest and it looks absolutely ridiculous. But I can now put things like my um, IOT in it and it will be repaired, presumably be repaired. 
Yes, there we go. You can see the durability going up there. It's not any faster than the old blood chest was, but I believe it has probably more capacity for, for, for the blood. I'm not sure if it does, but it probably does. And you can put a lot more things in it at once if you need to. And it was a quest to do it as well, so I thought I might as well. And as you can see, this is now nearly done. So we'll let, we'll let this one finish, grab it out, and then we can carry on and see what talk about what else I've been doing. Okay, so making these um, these bound tools and ritual tools and things like that was um, slightly was at least a little bit interesting because we we had to use the um, so use the arcane ashes. You make a little blob of them on the floor like that. In fact, let's do this outside because it, it looks silly inside. So you find somewhere where you want to do your your um, dark and evil magic. So we put some of them down here like that. It's ruined the path, but never mind. I can fix that later. Then you put in. Then you boop it with the was it this was it with the diviner? I've, I've forgotten how this works now already. No. No, it was not like that. Let's take that back again. Let's look in the, um, in, the in, in the instructions. Oh, you need binding reagent, and that was fairly expensive, to, a, a bit of an effort to make. But then essentially, you put both of those into the into the uh, stone in, into the into the uh, circle you've made, and then it'll start to glow and animate in a ridiculously over-the-top kind of way. There'll be lots of lightning, and then you get out the thing you are asking for. I'll put in some video from the stream so you can see what I'm talking about. But it was it was quite spectacular. But the stuff you got out wasn't really worth it. Maybe we'll find some stuff that's used better, better in the future. The best thing I've made so far is this sigil of the blood lamp. This is absolutely great. So it's a way of essentially turning life essence into torches. So let's let's go and find somewhere that's a bit a bit gloomy, shall we? Here we go. Here's a random cave system. So yeah, it's dark down there because, you know, it's a cave. So there are all kinds of ways that you can light a cave up. You can you can go down there. You can put down torches. That's the traditional way. Um, I believe you can get fire arrows or torch arrows that will go out and, and, and light place up as well. Alternatively, I can use this thing. And if I right click, then it fires out a thing like that. And you get this sort of blood splatter on the wall that sort of continues to splatter. But it lights the area around it up. So you can just light up a, a, bit, a huge area. Very, very... Ooh, another meteorite. Very, very easily like this. <clears throat> um, and apparently set fire to whatever that is. That's interesting. Um, at least I assume that was me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really quick and easy way to light the place up without leaving torches scattered all over the place, and with a sort of a dark magicy feel to the um, to the area that you've lit up because there's little dribbles of blood coming off the walls. <laughs> Lovely. And so I can turn on the uh, show me where it's dark and then just cover it like this. And this thing has a phenomenal range as well. I don't know if it's actually unlimited, but it certainly does work over a huge distance. Um, you can light up places on practically on the other side of the map um, from, yeah, as I say, from a very, very long way away. So this is really, really useful, and I almost wish I was going to be playing for a lot longer because this is just so much easier than any other method we found of illuminating the place. So let's 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 try for an example. Let's go and stand on the top of the house over here. Now that the sun's gone down, it's really easy to spot dark areas, and that mountain over there. Let's see if I can hit that. And this one over here, I'm sure I'll be able to hit. It takes a little while for them to fly across, of course. There we go. So that one's been hit now. We've, we've lit up over there. So we've got that level of range. Just keep watching over there. And, well, it could take a little while for it to get over there. I'm, um, I've am i noticed they don't tend to... It doesn't fly all that quickly. Let's fire another burst of them just so just in case it's... Uh, just in case I missed. I don't think I did, but a bit of a spray over there. Um, and go and have a look. That might have been beyond the maximum range of this thing. It's, 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 it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I think it was. None, none of it hit. Okay, but as you can see, it's certainly got quite a spectacularly long range. Let's, let's shoot all these trees down here as well. Yeah, so we can we can light up a significant chunk of the forest from up here. So this is going to be this would be great for going spelunking because you just don't have to go all the way down. You can light up an area without before you go down into it to have a bit of a look down there and see if it's worth going into and investigating. And potentially, I don't I don't know quite how the um, the spawning works in Minecraft, but it occurs to me that if you wanted to be a sort of a little bit cheaty, you could light up an area, then go away so that all of the mobs in that area despawn. And then come back, and it'd be a, just a, a really safe way of exploring. But that does feel a little bit cheaty, so I won't. I, I, I don't recommend doing things that way. <laughs> but yeah, this is a really, really useful tool. I'm um, quite impressed with it. The elytra is also excellent, as I demonstrate by flying over here. Landing is difficult, even with an elytra. Right. So, what's everyone else been up to? I think I think that covers everything I've done. Okay, Tristan's been working on making sure our fuel supply doesn't doesn't run out. I 
don't actually know what's what fuel he's referring to in this it could be the um it could be for the nuclear reactor so we don't run out of power or it could be for something it might maybe it's maybe it's rocket fuel i'm, I'm not i'm not sure um but he says he's also had done a bit of work on the mystical agriculture to make sure we get the uh, the steel essence through a bit quicker and we seem to have a thousand and twenty four of that and looking at these drawers i think that's the maximum so that's clearly he's clearly done rather a good job of that oh that's compressed iron essence Are you steel essence your steel essence we've got 477 of that so it's not quite as good as i thought but still that still seems like quite a lot of it so i should get us plenty of steel He's also been making new circuits. He made the launch pad that was in the bottom of the launch silo I showed you earlier, and he's been upgrading machines to run faster so other people don't get quite so impatient. It sounds like Mike and Pete have been squabbling a little bit as they usually do. So they've been. Uh, Mike made a laser gun with the express need, uh, reason of uh, presumably shooting Pete with it. Um, Pete dug the rocket silo and then got shot by it, and both of them have been up to quests as well. Um, so yeah, as we can see, Pete is apparently a monster. Uh, <laughs> And a murderer. Okay, good. Well, I'm uh, I'm glad they're getting their um their their uh, frustration releasing their frustrations through the medium of cows. What what more could you want? <laughs> I'm not sure what else Al has been up to, as he hasn't reported back yet to give it to give his um his his stream updates. But I know that at least a large chunk of what he was doing was making those uh, spacesuits that I was talking about earlier. So he's been um, he's been reasonably busy. He's got got some stuff done, and I'm sure he's also been doing quests because basically everybody has. So, yeah, that's, uh, I think that brings you pretty much up to date. So, thank you for watching. We've been doing these streams generally on Thursday evenings, so uh, if you want to see us playing um, a bit more, um, play, playing live, essentially, then come along to the, come along to the stream, have a, you, can, you can watch watch from there, and we'll, uh, we, then you can ask any questions you've got about the game, and we'll, uh, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, we've got the Factorio streams are now up, up and going again. We're now playing... Um, we're playing Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2, just to make things a little bit harder for us. Um, and that's going pretty well, actually. We're um, we, we we had one stream. We've had one stream so far, and as you'll see from yesterday's video, we made quite a lot of progress in that. That that went that went went very well, I think. So we're uh, yeah, we're doing well there, and think making some nice progress. I'm looking forward to the next next session, and there'll be lots of other stuff coming out at various other times during the week as well. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream, and I'll see you next time.